Uh, good. Committee, 6th of December 2022. Uh, just a few notes from me before we start. Please speak as close as you can to the microphone. I sat in a meeting the other day and couldn't hear anybody if they didn't speak into the microphone. Uh, we have got some members of the audience, uh, members of the public in the audience today. So uh, let's help them out by speaking clearly and into the microphone so that they can actually hear. Uh, secondly, uh, I'd like to just uh, mention that Council Price uh, is sitting in the meeting today um, he, he, as a member of the committee. Uh, unfortunately, he hasn't completed his planning training yet, so we'll not be able to partake in debate or vote, but we set a precedent previously, before I was the chair, that allowed members to sit in the meeting, uh, just essentially to observe, uh, and that is what's happening this evening. Uh, Straight on with the agenda tonight then. Uh, apologies for absence. I've received apologies from Councillor Box. Uh, and somebody else? Who was the other one? Okay. Councillor Cooper. Uh, anybody aware of any other apologies? Nope. Minutes of the previous meeting. Committee's wish I sign them as a true and correct record. Moved by Councillor Goodall, second by Councillor Harper. I'll have a show of hands of those who were at the last meeting. Thank you very much. Any declarations of interest are made? Fantastic. Straight on to applications for consideration then. Uh, we've got one application uh, before us this evening, 0417 stroke 2022. I'm going to hand over to Glenn. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just a couple of words of order. The first thing is um, the case officer was due to speak on the application, unfortunately, had a flat tyre, so was unable to do her presentation this morning, uh, sorry, this evening. So I'll be doing it on her behalf. So to make things clear, what I'll do, I'll read through the committee report in full, so you're fully aware of the planning application before us tonight. Any questions, obviously, do let me know, and I'll hopefully be able to answer them, referring to the report in terms of um, details, in terms of the scale of the proposal, and any other information that you may wish to know. So the following application is at six Cliff, uh, sorry, nine Clifford Close in Glasgow in Tamworth. Um, an original application was received in 2021 for a single two-story building on the side of the garden. This application was withdrawn due to ownership issues with the site and also advised that there could be a refusal due to design implications of the proposal. Following the ownership issues being rectified, an application was simply, simply uh, resubmitted in July 2022 and refused under delegated powers. Some minor changes have been made to this scheme in comparison to this withdrawn application. But this application that we are reporting on today is a resubmission of this refused application. However, the documents and plans submitted are identical to the one that was refused um, previously. The application its site, um, itself has a site area of 228 square metres and to the east side of the host dwelling. The site is situated in an established residential area with bungalows on either side and beyond on Clifford Close. To the rear of the site is a piece of incidental open space, isolated by the surrounding dwellings and opposite side of the road is a dense row of conifer trees, beyond of which are two storey semi-detached dwellings. <coughs> the dwelling itself would measure approximately 6 metres by wide by 12 metres deep, with a pitched roof 2.4 metres to the eaves and 4.1 to the ridge. It would include one window in the front elevation, two double full high patio doors at the rear, a front door, window and a roof light on the east facing side elevation and two windows and a roof light on the east face side elevation. A drive-in access point has recently been created to the front of the drive in advance of making this planning application. The proposed dwelling would include a lounge, kitchen, utility room and two double bedrooms and a bathroom. A pre-application was submitted for the application. The applicants were advised, however, that the space would likely be too small to accommodate a new dwelling, and there were some additional concerns regarding design and layout and the limited amenity space that would be provided by the scheme. The application is before us, um, as it has been called in by Councillor Wade for the following reasons. The Tamworth Emerging Local Plan shows a need for further housing in the area, and we have a duty to uh, cooperate with LDC and North West Borough, uh, North West Warwickshire Borough Council to meet our need. This application is opposite for new dwelling with minimal impact on infrastructure and neighbours, and we need to support housing growth. And I think from memory that is everything on the application. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Glenn. Uh, we do have uh, a speaker this evening, but before uh, we you know, I invite the speaker uh, to uh, get a seat. Uh, most of you will be aware, and I hope you've read the letter 
that uh, got submitted um, by Councillor Cook on behalf of Councillor Wade, who called this application in before committee. Uh, I am going to read it just in case. Um, uh, just in case uh, people haven't read it. Uh, evening committee, I have called this planning uh, application to you. Uh, to you, the committee, uh, with my full support uh, for this bungalow to be approved. I've been to the plan site. I have physically uh, measured myself off the plan submitted that there is sufficient land for this bungalow and more scope for amenities if need to. Uh, Tamworth Borough Council Planning Department had three objections to the proposed build. Number one, the plan build uh, didn't fit as, uh, in with what's already there. Uh, two, no biodiversity plan submitted. Uh, three, the bungalow doesn't uh, meet the required measurement of 42 metres. Uh, 40 metres squared, I think that should be. Um, uh, Mr. and Ms. Williams uh, have quite clearly demonstrated uh, that their bungalow and bungalow uh, number one uh, doesn't fit in with the rest of the bungalows, and as the planned bungalow is on, and as the planned bungalow is on the same plot of land, uh, number nine. Uh, I've taken the view it shouldn't make no difference. Uh, looking at the street view, Mr. and Ms. Williams have not submitted a biodiversity plan uh, as they are not removing any of the hedges, trees, shrubs that are already there. Uh, more trees, uh, shrubs will be added. Uh, the planning department is correct that the plan bungalow doesn't quite uh, reach 42 metres squared, as uh, it's 38 metres. Uh, if this is a stumbling block, uh, for non-approval, could the committee give a clear indication on this so that Mr. Mr. Williams can go back to the draftsman, uh, as this can be easily rectified. Uh, so, committee, as many of you know, I work in the construction industry. I'd like to think I know what I'm doing uh, regards of planning and reading of plans uh, as I work with them every day. Uh, so, if I didn't think this bungalow deserved to be in front of you uh, on its merits, I would not have called it to you, the committee. Uh, bearing in mind... Uh, what this build is. Uh, sorry, bearing in mind what this build is, a bungalow is not designed for a family of five, but for someone who is looking to downsize or elderly, uh, and not many, if any, uh, bungalows get built now. Uh, so if this is uh, built uh, and came on the open market, I think it would be an attractive, uh, can't read what that says, attractive uh, for the, sorry? Ah, okay, thank you. Yeah, a directive property uh, for the people. Yes, he's put it in brackets afterwards. Uh, committee, have a good good debate. Councillor John Wade. Uh, so, yeah, that was the letter submitted uh, by Councillor Wade, just in case people weren't aware of it. Uh, at this point, I would like to invite Mrs Williams, who's indicated uh, to the planning department that she would like to speak on the uh, application. So, if you'd like to come forward. Yeah, there's fine. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Williams is going to get three minutes to address the committee. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, exactly. Uh, on the screens in front of you, you will see um, the, the, not a countdown of the time remaining, but it, you'll get alerts when there's one minute and 30 seconds remaining. Uh, I do give a bit of a leeway with regard to the three minutes, but if it. Pretty much. Uh, yeah, it's the centre bottom button, uh, and it was, time will start whenever you uh, start speaking. Right. Thank you. Can I just, before we start, say a big thank you to John Wade for the help and support he's given us. Uh, the one objection to our bungalow being built is that it doesn't keep in keeping with anything up Clifford Close. Our bungalow is nothing like the Close. It's an individual bungalow that was built 20, 21 years ago, 22 years ago, totally out of character with the Close. But as you come up the close, you can't see the close because the end of our bungalow, there are um, fir bushes. So there's no impact for this proposed bungalow that would be out of character around the close. Um, secondly, the um, land is a good sized piece of land. As you know, you've got the measurements. We know that we will build a good bungalow um, in keeping with number nine. Um, and then the other problem that we came across is the gardens that um, what's going to be, I've got the name of it, um, obviously the conifers, the trees will be kept in place. We've planted since we've been there. We've had the garden landscaped. We've planted trees. 
We've planted bushes down the far end of our garden. We've kept it as a little nature reserve where we've got squirrels and foxes and all sorts of birds. There are bird feeders which we have shown um, to Glen. We feed our birds. We've got water baths. We've got everything. So we do encourage the um, garden for the birds to come in and out. How much more time have I got? <laughs> so basically, when this bungalow, um, we, we tried to get this bungalow approved, it was for a member of the family, not to go on sale for profit as soon as it was built. It was going to be built for a member of the family. Unfortunately, my brother-in-law passed away and he was cremated last week. So now it would be ideal for my sister to come and live next door. Um, it's not for profit, it is purely for a bungalow and then anything happen, we would rent it out as a low price bungalow for anyone in the area that wants to downsize from a house they've rented into our bungalow. We're not wanting to make a profit. Am I done? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, well. Um, well, I can't think of anything else to say, so... <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay. Absolutely no need to apologise, Mrs Williams. Uh, thank okay. you very much for... Uh, All right. Yep. Yeah. If you wouldn't mind pressing the button you did initially. Thank you very much. Uh, at this point, I'm going to ask if uh, members have got any questions or any clarification they would like to uh, put in the direction of Glenn. Councillor Maycock. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, just one, really. Um, so the applicants did seek um, advice before putting in the application? That's correct, yes. Cheers, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Sorry? Okay, yeah. Um, from what uh, Mrs Williamson said about the fact that it's for an elderly family member, um, is it possible to apply conditions whereby we say that um, people over a certain age, pensioners, uh, it would be in the future uh, only allowed to be let um, to people that met the criteria? Um, that, that, that's my question, Glenn. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. For conditions, it's difficult. I'm not going to say, you know, it's not been done, but in my experience, I think, generally speaking, that kind of applies when you put a Section 106 on things, so it's a larger schemes, in my experience. I've got legal advice here, but generally when you have a Section 106 agreement, we would include clauses in there to say, across a big scheme, say 20% of the units all would have to cater for the, you know, an elderly population, for example. For smaller units like this, you know, in my experience, I've never seen it. And I think it'd be very difficult for a condition to meet the enforceability test um, for that to you know to be a viable condition. But again, I would ask if my colleague Jane in legal could give me some support on that, please. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, what members would have to think about in that situation, as Glenn has said, is whether it would be that condition was necessary or the Section 106 was necessary to overcome any planning objections. Um, it is possible to, to ask for a 106 to secure that future occupation can be limited to um, low cost rent or to a certain um, criteria like an elderly person. But what members would have to consider is whether, um, whether that was necessary and whether that would um, overcome the other planning objections that that there are on this site. Now, I think what Glenn is, what the officers advise to you in the planning aspects of it is that there are very, there are objections to this application in terms of um, which are set out in the report, and so you'd have to consider whether it was appropriate to think that the securing the future occupation. Um, uh, through a 106, because that's the only way you would do it, would actually um, would actually overcome your object the the planning objections on on this bungalow. Um, I think Glenn said that it probably wouldn't meet the test for planning conditions. It um, it, it 
it's nothing that we could insist on in that sense. Um, and it wouldn't stop. The applicant, of course, has the right of appeal if it's a condition and could appeal any condition you impose. So you could only do it by 106, and really the officer advice is that it, 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 wouldn't, so it wouldn't meet the legal test for 106. Okay, thank you. Uh, the other thought was um, John Wade, within his letter, um, said that at the moment it's 38 square metres, the floor, pl uh, floor plan of it. Um, if it were to increase by six metres, square metres, um, would that then satisfy the planning department's objection on that side? Thank you, Chair. For that element, I'll have to refer back to section 6.5 of the committee report. Um, so the layout of the dwelling um, would have to, the SPD recommends a garden length of 10.5 and an area of 75. So if the dwelling met them requirements, then obviously we would look on it, you know, more favorably. Um, but obviously, you know, 75 is what we're trying to achieve in the SPD. So that is, again, you know, another reason that we've laid down as a, a reason for refusal. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, 75 is really what we're after to really hit that premium of space that we're, you know, we require for applications. Thank you. Um, final point. Um, by looking at the plan in front of us, um, the... This, this, the slug of land, the plot, if you like, um, conveniently, um, if it were not built, would lead r right through to that plot of land behind of the bungalows, um, which um, I think would perhaps attract a developer um, to try and buy the land and, and develop it. Um, that 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 um, one thing worries me. And also, um, the objection is coming from Clifford Close. Um, on Clifford, uh, Clifford Road, there's quite a diverse sort of layout of, of uh, properties um, down there. Um, so the argument that it's perhaps not um, similar to adjoining uh, properties really, in my opinion, um, doesn't really stack up. Um, that's it. Thank you. Glenn, would you like anything you'd like to come back on there? No, Chair. Nothing for me. Thank you. Councillor Goodall. Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> my attention is brought to the, the statement that the site is currently the subject of an enforcement case regarding a tree house in the rear garden. I, ca I can't ever uh, remember seeing a, a statement like that within a report and I just wondered if we could get a little bit of background on on that thank you yes I think that just plays to the history of the site um, so it's something we've just picked up as a, as a history check that there is that ongoing investigation and as I say it was just part of the history of the site and we've um, put included it into in the tonight's report further questions Councillor Harper. Thank you, Chair. Um, this application um, appears to me really, it's, uh, it's the size of the site and the size of the building appear to be the, um, the overriding concerns. Um, would this application be dealt with more sympathetically if it were an extension an annex to the original building, would that um, negate some of the problems which are mentioned in this report? Thank you. So traditionally, yes, annexes obviously are a smaller unit of accommodation. Um, but with annexes, there would have to be a degree of dependency on the host dwelling. And the applicant, I think, has made it quite clear that this would be, you know, for somebody independent of the dwelling. So therefore, we have to treat it as such. So going down the minds of considering the SPD, because the SPD is very much geared to, again, separate living accommodation. You know, we've referred to that because that's what we believe the applicant's intentions, that it will be an independent unit. But if it was a smaller unit of accommodation, you know, there, there could be scope. But we've not had that indication that that is the applicant's intention for this, for this site. Um, yes, I think that's what I'd say on that matter. Anyone else? Councillor Smith? 
Yeah, I was just going to say, do you know what other residents slash neighbours think in the area about this? Unfortunately, I believe there's only one etter of concern. Other, no one has come forward with, if I remember rightly, additional representations. Yeah, we had no no neighbour comments, unfortunately. Um, so, unfortunately, we don't. Anyone else? Open up for anybody who wishes to debate the motion, uh, the application in front of us. Does anybody wish to start? Go on, Councillor Goodall. Thank you, Chair. A um, couple of things, really. I, 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 I do think the general street scene um, would be affected by this design of, 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 of bungalow. Um, I've been down the, the street and there's, uh, there's a significant number of bungalows at the end that are of a, of a similar design. While I do understand that the, um, the applicant's bungalow is, is slightly, slightly different design. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm slightly confused as to why the, um, the applicants have, have sort of carried on with the, the actual um, application based on the, on, the, on the advice from, from, from officers that it perhaps would fail um, based on the size and the, and the other reasons given. Um, so at the moment, I'm, I'm, I'm mindful to go along with the recommendation within the report. Um, however, I'll hear what other other members have to say and and, uh, and and make up my mind in due course. Thank you. Okay, I've, I've listened carefully to what's been said. Um, if I'm right, then. Um, we'd need section 106 on the on the other side of things to to actually limit to aged people um, but the crazy thing to me is the fact that if that application were to be um, glued on to the number nine then it probably would be viewed quite differently um, and whilst we have well. We might have mind to support um, planning on the refusal. Um, I would really like to see um, the planning department um, have a chat with um, number nine and find out whether or not that would be acceptable to them. Um, for such a close to actually have it so close. And it's okay to have it as an annex um, where the relative could actually inhabit it um, and yet not support the, um, the detached dwelling. Um, I can perhaps see that, but I think possibly it would be better if uh, Mrs. Williamson was actually consulted and, and perhaps accepting there's a need for a relative to to be close to them. As you get older, you find that um, you do wish for elderly relatives to be close. Um, I think that could be a possibility, actual track to go down. Um, if if it is refused tonight, I would I would recommend that um, that option be placed in front of the applicant, and let's see where we go. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thurgood. Councillor Harper. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think I think all of us here have uh, sympathy with the applicants and will do um, what we can to help facilitate um, what it is you want. It's your land. It's your home. And um, I think we're all of a mind, I suspect, to help in any way we can. However, um, there are some problems with the application, um, which, to, from from what I've read, are currently um, extremely good reasons for um, for refusing. 
Um, what I would suggest is that you and the planning department get together and work out a plan that is acceptable. Um, I'm sure there is a way of, uh, of doing this and um, coming to terms with the, the, the conditions that are, are there for refusal, removing those and basically making this an application that we can uh, accept. I don't think at the moment we can accept it because of the, uh, the problems that um, the report clearly states. But I suspect that if certain steps were taken and conversations were had between yourselves and the planning department, we could come to a very amicable solution that would be in everybody's interests. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Harper. Uh, Councillor Daniels, you moved the mic towards your face, uh, so I hadn't seen you indicate, but I'm assuming that means you did want to come in. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank, um, this is to say thank you for Councillor Harper and for Councillor Thurgood for their comments. I'm in complete agreement, and we have the benefit on the committee of seeing you know, previous reports, reasons why things would be rejected, you know, the local plan, but having that kind of conversation, that dialogue where we take kind of the legal side and tie it to those human experiences, hopefully it will be a benefit to them in future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Daniels. Councillor Summers. Thank you. I'm going to provide an alternative view. Because as far as I'm concerned, there's one key thing that sticks out to me about this and that there's been no comments from the neighbours. When does that happen when there's somebody building a house in your back garden? Um, I don't agree with the point that Councillor Wade made in his letter that this is going to contribute in any way to our housing needs. Um, that's a complete non-argument as far as I'm concerned. But looking at the close on Google Maps, Street View, um, it's a hodgepodge of different houses. Um, it's tucked out of the way. To be honest, if somebody would happily live there and subsequently buy it, I would not really have a problem with it. The neighbours haven't objected. If they had objected, if there'd been strong representations to say, don't want it there, then I'd be of mind to say, well, no, the people around it don't want it. But in fact, not one of them has come out and said they don't want it. You know, we, we, if we're here to listen to people, then uh, why don't we listen to the silence and find that, in fact, it's not really going to hurt anybody. Um, I'd be minded to uh, support it personally. Anybody else? Well, the, the application before us uh, is, uh, the recommendation within the report is for refusal. Um, I've heard different viewpoints, so if anybody would like to either move the refusal or move an alternative recommendation, I'm open to hear it. Thank, thanks, Chair. Um, I've listened to what other members of, uh, of the committee had said, and I'm, while I have some sympathy with the with the residents, um, the applicants, I, I I don't feel that it's 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 fitting in with the qualifications that we we want from a from a housing perspective, and and I'd like to uh, move that we refuse. Uh, thank you, Councillor Goodall. It's been moved. Does anybody want to second Councillor Goodall's uh, 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 refusal? Councillor Maycock is. Are there any alternative recommendations for, from the committee this evening? Uh, yes, Councillor Thurgood. Thank you, Chair. Um, further to what I was saying earlier on, if we do refuse it, I think perhaps if we could add into the refusal that um, close liage, uh, liaison uh, takes place between planning and the applicants in order to try and navigate a way through this. Um, that, that, that's what I would propose. Uh, thank you. Just one second. From speaking, Councillor Thurgood, from speaking uh, to the excellent legal advice I've just received, we can add it as a note to the applicant. Uh, but it couldn't be added as a reason, uh, as a, 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 basically a, an addition to a condition of refusal kind of thing. Yeah. 
That would be really um, the, the applicant to go back to planning and sort of look for a way forward themselves. That's what you're saying? Uh, that is the understanding of the advice I've got, and I'll look to Glenn uh, to give us a nod if that is the understanding and actually come in. But I was just also add, obviously, we are always open. <laughs> you know, anyone wants to have discussions, pre app, you know, it's definitely endorsed in local and national policy that we'll definitely have to conversations with applicants, you know, on, on proposals. No problems at all. And would um, planning actually guide them down a particular route that would achieve their goal? You to provide accurate pre-app response, so within the application, we would, uh, I, I, you know, detail our responses and our, you know, our thoughts mm. as best as we can. Okay, thank you. Uh, somebody indicated Councillor Harper. Yes, it was you. <laughs> thank you, Chair. Yes, basically, I'd, I'd like to echo uh, what Councillor Thurgood has, has just said. If we do refuse this application, this isn't the end of the road. Um, it's quite, it's quite possible that a solution can be sought reasonably quickly and reasonably easily uh, between the planning department and the applicant and um, personally I would suggest that's the route that we that we go down but don't stop because um, it's obviously something that you want and um, just have a chat with the the planners and come up with a solution and we I think to a person be delighted to uh, to pass this through. As it stands, there are considerations that we would be we would be disobeying uh, set procedures, um, which we really can't do, I don't think. Um, so do investigate. Don't don't give up, but uh, just have a chat and uh, come back, and uh, we'll see what we can do then. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put my two pence in. I very rarely do this on since I've been chair, but uh, I'm entitled to, so I will. Uh, I feel the, the argument for refusal, and, and I do sympathise massively with the applicant on this one. It is uh, very close to being dealt with by off, off a decision and not even coming before committee. Um, so if it, if it met the standards identified with planning policy and local plan, we wouldn't even be seeing this application. It, it, it would just be uh, dealt with by office, office decision. Uh, I feel uh, written with the item number three on refusal, not providing sufficient net gain, that could be easily negated by saying we're going to put in a bird path because it's a single property and we don't have to show we're delivering a massive uh, amount of net biodiversity gain for a bungalow. Um, um, if that equals 10%, fantastic. If it's two, if it's two bird baths or something of a similar work, great. Uh, but that could, I think, that could be easily be demonstrated uh, through future conversations with the planning department. Um, uh, and number two, number two is the the amenity in space and the Tamworth design SPD is is the main stickler for me and um, yeah that's that, that that's me as chair uh, uh, commenting but I I do sympathise massively with the applicant um, but I'm gonna say it, we've had a mover in the seconder uh, again I'm gonna offer any other alternate. Uh, uh, Recommendations from committee or motions from committee, and if not, I'm going to take a vote. There have been none. It's been moved by Councillor Goodall and seconded by uh, Councillor Maycock uh, that the application is refused as recommended in the report, uh, with noting Councillor Thurgood's strong plea to uh, put the note to the, onto the applicants to please come back to the planning department and let's work a way to help you get this through and not come before committee just dealt with by officer delegated decision uh, but it's been moved and seconded we're going to take a vote uh, all those in favor yeah. uh, against and there are no abstentions because council price is here i'm going to call you an observer this evening um but no that is uh uh, that motion is carried to refuse the, re the recommendation. I'm going to speak to the applicant. Please come back to and have a chat with the planning department and work out a way that we, we can help you and um, we can not see this application before committee and you, you essentially can get on with it. Thank you. 
Uh, last item is an item for noting. Uh, it is something that I wanted uh, straight away uh, uh, when I took over a position of chair in the committee, and it is some appeals a summary. Um, I had a good chat with Glenn about this uh, prior to the meeting. It's purely for your information. There can be no questions and debate on it, uh, but it's just for to get it in the public domain and to make sure you're aware of it. There have been some appeals about applications that um, we have uh, that, that are either that have been dealt with by our planning department, uh, and all of them have been found in our favour. Uh, so it really shows that our planning department is actually doing a half decent job um, on all applications. Uh, I did say no questions, but if it's a quick comment, go. Thank you, Chair. And it's not a question. It is just a quick comment and to say that I find that extremely useful, um, useful information because in the past we haven't had that. So, yeah, that's brilliant. Thank no, you. No, it's uh, when I initially, uh, it's taken a bit of a bit of time to get it uh, to the stage wrong because it's never been asked for by previous uh, years and plans, but it should be coming every three months or so. Thank you very much, everybody, for this evening. Thank you for your attendance, uh, and I wish you a safe journey home. Thank you very much.